All right, it is another day on the market. It is a Wednesday. It is the day where we're gonna find out how much the interest rates are going up by. It was reported this all this week, it's all they're talking about is the fact that you know, we're still experiencing high inflation here in Canada and the Bank of Canada needs to increase rates, but by how much, we don't know yet. Um, we'll find out, I think around 10 o'clock this morning, Eastern time. And we'll see how the markets react, which leads to this video, which is, I think is just gonna be an uncut monologue, if you will, unscripted, just chatting with you. Who am I? My name is Steve Coleman. I am a dividend stock investor, putting $150 every week into my tax-free savings account. And today is that day where I have $150 to put into the market, but I am hesitating. I'm hesitating to plan any purchases before the market's open because I think I want to see how things react today. So I was thinking about this this morning, like, you know, what I was going to say. And I was like, okay, is this a, am I timing the market by doing this? You know, be, because I'm a strong believer that it is time in the market that matters. Any of my investments have been for the long term, especially in my, my tax-free savings account. There's only been two other times that I sold something, fractional shares where I just was bought some as see what that was all about, what fractional shares were about, just a learning opportunity. But then I was like, okay, I, I, I'm just gonna get rid of these. I'm not gonna keep buying fractional shares. It just wasn't a strategy that I really wanted. I wanted to buy whole numbers. That's just me. And the other time I ever sold anything was with my um, S&P 500 ETF, um, the FV, where its dividend yield was around 1%, although I think it's probably gone up since then because the stock price has gone down so much. But it, it was just bringing my overall dividend yield down for my entire portfolio, which I'm trying to keep around 4% because I'm using this account to grow some passive income in the future. So 4% is around that sweet spot. If I can keep things around that 4% mark, you know, and that's how much dividends it pays me. By the time, you know, the account's up over a million dollars, that's $40,000 a year. And then by that time, I'm gonna be retired. I'm gonna have a pension, I'm gonna have my RSP. So this is just some play money for me to spoil my grandkids like crazy. Yeah, it looks like I lied. There was a cut, I apologize. Um, I've only ever sold things in those two instances. So keeping things for the long term has always been the strategy. So time in the market. But this morning, I feel like I am going to time the market ever so slightly to see what is going on with these investment, with the interest rates. If it is what the markets expect, if you know things should be nice and even, no ma major drops, no major increases either. But if it is more than what is predicted, I, I don't even think I've even heard the actual number. Is it is it five per, like five basis points? Is it seven point five seven seventy five basis points? Um, will I don't know. I don't know. So if I don't know, do they know? So of course they know. It's in their business to know. So I'm going to just sit back and wait and see what actually happens. Um, some of the stocks that I was planning on putting money into anyways were, again, Chorus Entertainment. Talk about them almost too much now. Um, they are just having to be one of my lowest positions right now from a value-wise because the stock prices have been dropping so much. And also, yes, from like unrealized gains. So... I, it's just time to put a little bit more money into them to kind of keep them up, keep that diversification going um, even. So right now I've got one big ETF that makes up like almost 25% of my portfolio and the remaining 12, 13 positions are all around that five, 6% mark. So all of a sudden, of course, is down below. Um, still around that 5% mark, but just on the low end. So I like to kind of tackle those ones to kind of keep that diversification as even as possible. So Chorus was going to be the one that I would pick today. And the nice thing is like, I'm getting it as a, a super amazing dividend yield, 11%, where I'm blocking in that at 11%. And already this is this this dividend 
from Chorus is going to be one of the biggest quarterly dividends I'll be receiving, uh, which is awesome. But it's almost like, okay, am I ballooning this one too much? I think I maybe should spread some money around. But you got to take advantage of those yields. You know, if I can buy it at a 11% yield, I'd be stupid not to. Then another one I was looking at, which I think the dividend yield is around 7%. So I'd be locking in at 7% is ACON, ticker symbol A-R-E. It again has been one that it's dropped below the $10 mark. Um, it's it's Obviously it's been way higher. I'm down currently around like the 24% on that one. So it's another one that I could definitely put some more money into. I think it's, it's in my top, my lower five of all my positions there from a value wise as well as from a it actually it's the second worst um, unrealized gains that i have in my portfolio um, acon but then there's there's positions like bell canada which again it well, again i don't know why i'm saying again um it's low on the value wise but it's a little higher in the unrealized gains percentage so I'm really trying to take advantage of some of the dollar cost averaging that I can do, locking in some really low yields. And yeah, that's that's part of the strategy. But I am waiting. I'm, I want to see what is going to happen on the markets. Um, drop me a comment if you are in the same boat. Are you relating to this video where it's like, okay, interest rates are going are gonna to increase. We don't know how things are going to react. And am I better off just waiting a day and then just seeing what happens? And I guess really there's no rule just because the money is available in my account on a Wednesday that I have to buy it on a Wednesday, right? It's, it's the most important thing is that every week I'm putting money into my tax-free savings account. I am intentionally saving money every week and putting it in the stock market it doesn't matter what day of the week I'm actually doing it on. So, you know, that's, I'm not breaking any rules here by just waiting a day. So, um, but it just obviously I'm, you know, produce these videos for you and sometimes I show these live buys and today was supposed to be more of a live buy type video, but it's not gonna be. It's gonna be a, we're waiting and seeing what happens, which I think is not a stupid strategy to, Hold back, get all the information before you make a decision. If anything, there you go. There's the theme of the video. You know, sometimes doing nothing can be the right thing. Just t sit back, take a look at what's going on, and then make the best decision for you. If chorus goes up by a little bit, and, you know, instead of buying, I think it was like 68 shares, I can only buy... 65 so what buy them at 65 the beautiful thing beautiful thing quick plug while simple trade is that it's zero commission so if i buy 65 this week and i buy you know three later um because let's say the stock price goes down the next day i'm paying zero commission on both those trades so it's not like i have to lump sum all these these transactions all at the same time to make sure I can keep my um, commission fees as low as possible. There are none with Simple Trade, which is why that is my brokerage that I use. So happy. You know, I wish this was around when I first started investing many moons ago, um, but it wasn't. It wasn't. So nice quick little plug for Simple Trade. Link down below. So we'll see what happens today. Um, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. You know, I don't want to make any predictions because this has been a totally, this is new territory. We, I don't think we've been in this situation before. And that's what I've been hearing on podcasts and articles about what the Bank of Canada is doing with, with this, this strategy to keep growing, keep increasing our interest rates where they're, they're using a playbook that was from like the seventies and we don't live in 1971 anymore. This is 2022 
and there is totally different world problems happening all right now that are definitely influencing the inflation um we're talking about the conflict in ukraine we're talking about like covid still I'm, i hate to break it to you COVID's still happening um china right like they're they can't get their products out because they're, there's continuous lockdowns because of their zero covid policy so there is a lot of different factors that are happening in the world that are causing this inflation not to mention just a lot of talk about some corporate greed you know prices being raised just so they can make more money make more money which clearly this is an investing channel we're in this to make money we're, we're shareholders we want to receive dividends for from these companies based on their profits we want to see them do well but i guess i i just have a bit of a hard time when it is on uh, the backs of all consumers out there and that maybe not all these profits are completely justified that they are raising prices under the guise of inflation and then these companies are making record profits and meanwhile interest rates are to keep going going up somebody who needs to reform finance their mortgage anytime soon um is going to get locked in at a, an extremely high rate and that is not good for the economy and then we've got the whole recession thing coming up so not good times ahead so i'm just gonna sit back and wait and see what happens today so i'm very fortunate that we can i can put 150 dollars into my tax-free savings account every every week actually if, if anyone's been paying attention although i haven't really said this every other week i've actually been putting 300 dollars into my tax-free savings account so some extra money was um freed up but in the new year, that actually is going to go completely against the mortgage just because these interest rates are kind of like, oh boy. I don't have to refinance my mortgage for another four years, but oh boy. I do not want to be refinancing it at such an extreme rate. So next year, more money is going to be going towards the mortgage. So that $150 I've been putting in my tax-free savings account, uh, we're actually going to divert that to the mortgage and really ramp up paying that off. So instead of another nine years, we're going to get that down to four years. We are going to just hammer it. So just because we think that is what will keep us, give us the most financial freedom overall. You know, so there's financial freedom from the passive income from the dividends, but I think there's a little bit of financial freedom from not having to pay a mortgage every two weeks. So that is the road that we're planning on taking. Again, this video was going to be a slight rant, little different topic, different different uh, uh, format. So let me know if you like, subscribe. Um, especially let me let me know in the comments if you relate to any of this and uh, yeah we'll see you in the next video which will be a more normal style video if, if I have a normal style so we'll see you in the next one keep it in the green and we'll talk to you later bye